Hello, it's Mr. Thompson here. Um, I'm going to talk you through today how to convert between metric units. In old terms, that's a, a grade E at GCSE. In new terms, it's around about the grade 2, 3 mark. Okay, um, I'm going to show you three examples, um, each getting progressively more difficult, uh, leading up to exam questions. And then I'll um, show you the kind of question generator I've made that will allow you to get some practice at home. Okay, so the first example uh, I'm going to talk you through is this one here, converting 550 centimetres into millimetres. Now, in order to do any of these questions, all of the three examples I'm going to show you, you need to know each of these facts. Uh, there's no shortcut to it, you've just got to learn them. Um, so, uh, I've broken them down into length, mass, and capaci capacity, and obviously there's different units within each. Uh, basically, what this is saying is one centimetre is the same as 1,000 metres, one metre is the same as 100 centimetres, and so on and so forth. Okay, so back to the question then. Um, first question, I'm going to convert 550 centimetres into millimetres. Now, the first thing I get uh, my groups to do here is I get them to underline the units. So I've underlined centimetres and millimetres, and now I'm going to go over to here. Or Both of these are units uh, of measurement for length, so they're going to be somewhere in this box. And I want you to find the fact that has centimetres and millimetres in it. So that's this one here. Uh, I'm just going to write this down again to demonstrate uh, how, we how we find out how to convert between them all. Okay, so one centimeter is the same as 10 millimeters. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is draw an arrow that goes between the units. Um, and I'm, I'm going to do one both ways. Okay, the direction of the arrows are very important. Uh, the question asked us to go from centimeters into millimeters. So I'm looking for the arrow that goes from centimeters to millimeters, which is this one here. Now, as you can see, um, one goes into 10, 10 times. So to get from 1 to 10, I'm simply multiplying by 10. And then to go the other way, if I'm going from millimeters into centimeters, I'm doing the opposite, which is simply to divide by 10. Okay. Now you can use this to convert any uh, value for centimeters into millimeters and vice versa. Okay. So if we, you can actually just ignore the, the fact now. So now we've just got centimeters into millimeters. Okay, so writing out the question again, uh, I want to convert 550 centimeters and I want to convert that into something millimeters. Okay, so as this little diagram we've just done shows, to go from centimeters into millimeters, all I have to do is multiply that by 10. Okay, 5500 multiplied by 10 uh, gives me 5500 millimeters. Um, in an exam, sometimes they will have put the units in the little answer box for you. If they haven't, you have to make sure you include them, because if you don't, uh, you're not going to get all of the marks that are available for that question. Uh, and this is our answer, 5,500 millimeters. That's all there is to that one. So if we try a second example, uh, this one says convert 4, 000, sorry, 4 million grams into tons. So looking at this question, same as before, we're going to underline the two units that, uh, that are in the question, grams into tons. Uh, both of these are units of mass. So under this box here, we're looking for a fact that has both grams and tons in it. Um, as you can see, though, both of them have kilograms in. Uh, this one has tons and that one has grams. There, are, there is no fact there that has both grams and kilograms, uh, grams and tons in. So there's an extra step to this question. The first thing we're going to do is this 4 million grams, um, we're going to convert that because we've been given grams and we want to go into tons, we're going to convert the grams into kilograms first. Okay. So the fact I'm going to use to start with is one kilogram is the same as 1000 grams. Okay. Um, so if I'm going this way, just like last time, this time I'm timesing by a thousand and to go the other way, I'm simply dividing by a thousand. Okay. So the first thing, uh, four million, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we want to convert that into kilograms. Using my fact over here, all I'm going to do is to go from grams into kilograms, we're dividing by a thousand. So four million divided by a thousand gives me 4,000 kilograms. Okay, now we're nearly done. The last thing we're going to do, that's step one, if you like. And the second step, 
Now over here, look. Sorry, I should have put the uh, units in here. That's grams to kilograms. Um, over here, look. I've now got my answer in kilograms, but I want to convert that into tons. So instead of writing four million, I'm now going to write four thousand kilograms, and I want to convert that into tons. Okay, so this time we're going to use a different fact. In fact, let's do the rest of this question in a different colour. Um, I'm now going from kilograms into tons, and you can see now if I underline my two units, there is a fact with those two in there. So one ton uh, is the same as 1,000 kilograms. Again, if I'm going from tons into kilograms, I'm timesing by 1,000. One times 1,000 gives me 1,000. And then the opposite of true is true if I'm going the other way. Okay, so kilograms uh, into tons, kilograms into tons, we're dividing by a thousand. Four thousand divided by one thousand gives me four tons. So a little bit uh, of extra work for that question, but four thousand grams into tons would simply be four. And again, remember your units, that's going to be tons. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. Okay, so this is my final example uh, and this one is quite typical of uh, an exam style question. There are a couple of steps here. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is again read the, well, read through the question first. A wall is 30 kilometers long, uh, a slab is 9.6 meters long. Um, what I should have said is that all the slabs used are the same length. Um, how many slabs are needed to build the wall? OK, so um, these wordy questions do tend to catch a few people out. The first thing you want to notice with this question is that both the measurement of the wall and the slabs are given in different units. Um, it, they need to be in the same unit for you, for you to be able to answer these questions. It doesn't matter if you convert them both into kilometres. Uh, so, for example, um, the slab into the length of the slab rather than metres represent it in kilometres or if you do the opposite with wall, the length of the wall. Um, so convert the length of the wall 30 kilometers uh, into meters. Um, I'm going to convert the wall into meters just to avoid uh, a very small decimal. Okay. So um, the first thing I want to do is make sure they're both in the same units. So we want to deal with this. Okay. Because this is in kilometers, this is in meters, I'm going to convert kilometers into meters. So looking over under my length, kilometers into meters, one kilometer is the same as 1,000 meters. So to go from kilometers into meters, I'm times it by 1,000. And to go from meters into kilometers, I'm going to do the opposite, which is simply dividing by 1,000. OK, so the length of the wall, let's just make a note so we don't get confused. The length of the wall. I want to convert 30 kilometers and I want to write that in meters. Okay, so to go from kilometers to meters, I'm simply timesing by a thousand. So this one is going to be, th I should have written times by a thousand. This one is going to be 30,000 meters. Okay, so we now know that the length of the wall is 30,000 meters. And we also know the length of one single slab is 9.6 metres. Okay, so we want to find out how many slabs it would take to build this wall. So how many full slabs would fit into uh, 3,000. So actually what I want to do is I want to do, sorry, 30,000. Um, I want to do 30,000 divided by 9.6. Okay, now you're not expected to do that without a calculator, so here's mine, 30,000, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to divide that by 9.6, and that comes up as a nice number, 3,125 slabs. Okay, um, I should have chosen an example actually where I had a decimal. Let's say... I mean, this one didn't, this one's fine, but let's say this one came out as 3,125.6 slabs, okay? 
I just want to emphasize that is your answer. Our question's finished, but this is just an example of where it might not. Let's say it came out as a decimal. That means that 3,125 slabs would not quite be enough to make the whole wall. So if this is the case, for this type of question, you need to think of it in context of the question. You would actually need another whole slab. You can't buy 0.6 of a slab. So you would actually need 3,126 slabs should this answer, the answer to this part, come out as a decimal. Okay, but that's the answer to this one. That's just in case it didn't. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now, I'll quickly show you uh, this question generator which I've made, and I'll put this a link to this is a drop um, on to my Dropbox uh, in the description to the video. When you open this file, uh, it's called Metric Conversions. I've cut off the title at the top. There will be a little kind of orangey yellow box that appears at the top here. That will say one of those boxes there. Well, the only box there should say enable content. You must click that for this question generator work for all these buttons to work. Okay. Now, what you can do here is the three examples I've gone through correspond to kind of an easy, medium, and difficult. These are kind of exam questions at the bottom, um, and then these get progressively more difficult as they go down. So there's three questions for each dif difficulty level. Uh, what you can do if you'd like just to concentrate on one. Uh, if you just click on these eyes at the, at the end, you can kind of turn them on and off. Um, you can have a go, click new question, new question. Um, if you click on the question, have a go at the question and click on the question itself, it will give you the answer to each individual question. Um, so you can have a go at doing those. Um, you can click one of these shapes just to get new questions for a, for a certain difficulty level. Uh, the other thing you can do is show all answers at once. Um, or you can, if you've done a couple of them, you can hide all the answers to, to have another go at them. I don't know. There's just a, there's buttons there that might um, give you a hand at practicing some questions. Okay. Um, I hope that that's the end of the video. I hope it's been useful. Um, please go away now and uh, you can get some practice before your GCSE exams.